we desperately need to replace our front doormat as it has seen better days. So I thought why not try and make one myself with some acrylic paint and a vinyl stencil and see how it goes. I'm going to be making this stencil with HTV Ron Vinyl as they have kindly sponsored this video. Do also check out their range on Amazon as well. They have so many different vinyl products that you could try out. So I also got this dark grey mat from B&Q. You can get more neutral ones from Ikea and I'm sure you can get a whole range of different colours from most hardware stores as well. I also got this acrylic paint from Amazon. It did say in the description that it was suitable for outdoors, so fingers crossed it will be okay. And I'm going to be using masking tape and a foam brush as well. I have seen quite a lot of people using freezer paper and a heat press or an iron to stick that to the mat, but I'm going to try this out with vinyl because it's vinyl decal school, so I kind of have to, don't I? So I'll start by making the stencil design. So you can actually get loads of pre-made designs on places like design bundles like this one, loads to choose from, but I am going to make my own for this. So I've just opened a canvas that is the same size as my mat so I know what size to do my wording and then I just wanted quite like chunky letters and a really simple design because I've never tried this before so I want to keep it as simple as possible so it's a little bit boring but it'll be fine for this trial run and then I'm just putting boxes around both of the bits of wording and putting them into a canvas that is the same size as my Silhouette Studio one so that it is easy to pull across like this. You can probably do boxes within Silhouette Studio as well, I'm just kind of used to doing them in Photoshop so that's why I did that. And then send them to cut. It does tell you the cut settings on the HTV RAM box which is really helpful. I did use the Cameo 3 ones because I've got a manual blade rather than an auto blade. So I just used that to change the settings in Silhouette Studio so that it would cut properly. And then added it to my roll feeder. One of the benefits of this vinyl is it has a PET clear backing rather than paper. So it doesn't get all stuck to your mat, especially when you've got a new mat and the paper just kind of shreds on it. So that's quite useful, but I was putting it through my roll feeder anyway. Then just weeded the in-betweens of the boxes, so the opposite to usual, and this was really easy to weed actually, came away really easily. And then added some transfer tape over the top as well to make things easier. Then just added it where I wanted it to go, actually I took the backing off first, came off fairly easily. So added it where I wanted it to go and then found the centre point just to make sure I had it centred on the mat. Then I taped across the top to keep that bit in place. It is useful if you keep a bit of the vinyl free of the transfer tape so then you can do that. And then you can remove the transfer tape a lot easier without it coming away because it doesn't actually stick to the mat um, because of the surface of the mat. So I'll show you what to do about that in a minute. I'm just taping down all of the corners and then I'm going to use a hairdryer to help it stick more. So this kind of melts the vinyl into the mat but not so much that you can't remove it. It is a little bit fiddly. Um, I'm using these creepy heat proof gloves that are supposed to be for styling hair but of course I'm using them for crafting but I do need to take them off to kind of push bits back down. So you just, if you can try and kind of push down as you're blowing the air on, obviously be really careful. If you don't have gloves, you don't want to burn your hand. Maybe don't put it on a really hot setting. But if you push down as you're blowing, it kind of helps to hold everything in place as it melts onto the mat. Then once you're happy it's stuck down, you can start painting. So just added a little bit of in a bowl. And then I'm going to use the edge of my foam brush to just dab at the mat in between the stencil. So you don't want to kind of push it across because you don't want to accidentally push it under the stencil. Just do a lot of kind of up and down dabbing and obviously it's helpful that the tape is there as well so it means you're not going to go over the edge of the stencil. 
and just dab, dab, dab. Then you will need to do a few coats. I think I did, I think this might have been my second or third coat. I think I did three or four, but I wasn't really leaving them to dry much in the middle. This was after I had left it to dry though. This was, this was probably three coats, I think. I think it could have done with maybe a couple more coats. It's not as thick as I would have liked it, but the stencil came off really easily. There was no paint underneath it and it worked really well. I'm really happy with that. Obviously just get rid of any middle bits very carefully. And then it was time to move on to the next bit. I had cut it down a little bit just so that I didn't go on top of the other bit. I didn't want to accidentally pull any paint off. And basically just repeated the same process all over again. This one was a lot fiddlier, obviously. Just put some tape down there to hold it because I hadn't left a bit blank across the top this time. Do just take it and that pulled it off there. So yeah, be really careful when you're pulling the, the tape off. You may just need to go back and move kind of the in between bits of letters around. Just kind of try and get everything in the right place before you stick it down with your tape. Putting the creepy glove on again and just going over it with the hairdryer. Be careful because with those small bits they can just blow off completely. So again, just really trying to push things down, but again, be careful. And then I did use a much smaller brush for this one because it's much thinner letters. And again, dab, dab, dab. Make sure you're getting into the really thin bits as well. Then once that one was dry I actually found this clear sealer that I forgot I had so I decided to seal it. I put that stencil back on just making sure it didn't go over the other one. Put a mask on then sprayed it outdoors and disaster struck when the wind blew it away but thankfully I had already done it a few times before this and I just forgot to press record. So it was actually done at this point, it wasn't a disaster. But be aware of that when you're doing that outside. And there it is. So as I said, I should have done a few more coats, but I'm quite happy with it. You can see what it says. And I think it's pretty good for a first attempt. And hopefully you can avoid the few mistakes that I made there. And I hope you found that helpful. Please don't forget to like, follow and subscribe for more videos like this in future.